In this chapter, I want to talk about the microscopic structure of digestive tract or alimentary tract. The digestive tract starts from our mouth cavity and ends at the anus. And this is a tubular structure. The wall of this tubular structure has uh, four layers. And now I want to talk about these four layers for you. The picture which you can see here is the general structure of the alimentary tract. In this picture, we have different layers with different colors. And the first layer which you can see here after the lumen is called epithelium. The epithelium is red in this picture. This epithelium is different in different parts of our digestive system. This epithelium is a stratified squamous in our mouth cavity and esophagus. It becomes simple columnar to do secretion in our stomach. It becomes simple columnar with villi and microvilli in a small intestine to do the best absorption. And we have simple columnar full of uh, glands and goblet cells in the large intestine to secrete enough mucus to lubricate the surface and help the defecation. And we have a small amount of absorption in large intestine too. So this epithelium is different in different parts of our digestive tract based on the function and physiology of that part. After the epithelium, you can see the uh, green part. This green part is the areolar connective tissue with collagen fibers, blood vessels, uh, lymphatics, uh, and a scattered lymphocyte and some nerve fibers, and we call it lamina propria. After the lamina propria, we have a very thin layer of longitudinally oriented muscle. The longitudinally oriented muscle means that the muscles which their axis is parallel to the axis of our lumen. And this muscle is a smooth muscle and we call it muscularis mucosa. The three layers, epithelium, Lamina propria and muscularis mucosa together is called tonica mucosa. And tonica mucosa is the first layer which we have in the wall of digestive tube. After tonica mucosa, you can see the next layer which we call it tonica submucosa. In tonica submucosa, we have connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue. You can see nerve plexus, which we call it submucosal plexus. And this plexus is responsible for controlling the secretion of the glands. We can see lymphatic follicle. In some parts, in the major parts of our digestive tract, we have solitary lymphatic follicle or the lymphatic follicles which are alone and in the ileum which is the last part of our small intestine we have aggregated lymphatic follicle which we call them peers patch after tonica submucosa which is the second layer we have our third layer the third layer is called tonica muscularis externa the tonica muscularis externa has two layers in most parts of our digestive system. But uh, in the two parts, they are different and I will talk about it later. In most parts, the inner layer is oriented circularly. It's circle around the lumen and the outer layer is oriented longitudinally, which is parallel to the axis of your lumen. So inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle. In the stomach, which is responsible for doing mechanical digestion, we have three layers instead of two. 
we have inner oblique, middle circular, and outer longitudinal muscles because we want to make contraction in all access to do mechanical digestion. And in the gallbladder, which is the accessory digestive part, uh, we only have one layer. So as you see here, we have differences in different parts of our digestive system. And between these muscles, you can see the connective tissue, a very thin connective tissue layer. This connective tissue is called myentric nerve plexus. And it can control the contraction and relaxation of these muscles. So the third layer is tonica muscularis externa. And after that, we have the last layer, which we call it tonica serosa or tonica adventitia. There is a difference between serosa and adventitia. If we have dense irregular connective tissue, imagine that these are the fibers. Between the fibers, you have fibroblasts and fibrocytes. If they are covered by simple squamous mesothelium, at the end, we call it tonica serosa. If this connective tissue is alone and it's not covered with anything, we call it tonica adventitia. So uh, if we have a coverage of mesothelium, we call it serosa. If we don't have mesothelium, we call it adventitia. In the uh, esophagus, we have tonica adventitia, while in the other part, we can see tonica serosa. And in the pictures, I will show them to you. So this is the general structures which we have for the alimentary canal or digestive tract or GI tract. The next picture which I want to show you is the difference between a small and a large intestine. In both a small and large intestine, you can see four layers. First, we have tonica mucosa, the epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. Then we have tonica submucosa, after that, we have tonica muscularis externa, and at the end, we have tonica serosa. So the layers which we have in the wall are the same. The difference which we have between a small and large intestine is the presence of these finger-like structures, which you can see uh, protrude to your lumen. These finger-like structures are called villi, and we can see them in the small intestine. In the small intestine, we have these villi. They can increase the surface area for absorption, but we don't have any villi in the large intestine. Now, I want to talk about the other thing for you. Look at here. Imagine that this is the epithelium. Sometimes the epithelium invaginates to the connective tissue beneath itself. You know that the connective tissue beneath the epithelium is called lamina propria. And you can see the invagination of epithelium to the lamina propria. This invagination can make the structure for us, which we call it gland. We have glands in most parts of our digestive system. In the stomach, we call them gastric glands. 
in the intestine, we call it intestinal crypt, both in large and a small intestine. The intestinal crypt or gastric glands, all of them are exocrine gland and they can send their secretion to the lumen. In your stomach and large intestine, you can see this feature. You see that the epithelium invaginates into the lamina propria and make gland for you. But in the a small intestine, it's a little different. In the small intestine, we have villi too. So first the epithelium come down and make gland. Then the epithelium and lamina propria protrude to the lumen and make villi. Again, we have gland and then we have villi. Pay attention, in the villi, you have the epithelium with the core of connective tissue or lamina propria. So all of these green parts are the lamina propria, which you have here. The imaginations are called villi. The depressions are called glass. Now, I want to talk about the models which we have in the lab. In the lab, we have a model which has four parts. And each of these parts can show us one region of our digestive tract. The first one is esophagus, then we have a stomach, a small and large intestine. When we look at this a structure uh, like this, you see that the epithelium in the esophagus is different from the stomach. In the stomach, we have glands, but we don't have it in the esophagus. In the small intestine, we have glands and finger-like projection of villi. And when we go to the large intestine, again, we miss the villi, but we have glands. So these are the differences which we can see in the first view. And the other differences, which is very visible here, is the tonica serosa or tonica adventitia. In the esophagus, you see that this connective tissue is naked from outside. This is dense, irregular connective tissue without any mesothelium. But in the stomach, in the small intestine, and in the large intestine, you can see mesothelium at the end. So in these three regions, we call them tonica serosa, but in the esophagus, we call it tonica adventitia. Now, I want to um, focus and zoom on each of these structures and talk about them completely for you. The first one is the esophagus. In the esophagus, the first layer which we have after the lumen is called tonica mucosa. The tonica mucosa has three layers. The first layer is the epithelium. And the epithelium which we have here is a stratified squamous epithelium. After the stratified squamous epithelium, you can see the lamina propria. And after that, we have muscularis mucosa. So the epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa together can make tonica mucosa for us. After the tonica mucosa, you can see the next layer, which is tonica submucosa. This is the dense irregular connective tissue. You can see blood vessels here. We also have lymphatics and submucosal plexus as the nerve fiber. In the esophagus, in the tonica submucosa, we have a gland 
which we call it esophageal submucosal mucous gland. Esophageal because it's in the esophagus. Submucosal because it's in the submucosal layer. And mucous because it can secrete viscous secretion of mucus. These esophageal submucosal mucous glands can open through a duct into the lumen. And you can see the openings in the lumen of the esophagus. After the tonica submucosa, we have tonica muscularis externa. The tonica muscularis externa has middle, sorry, inner circular and outer longitudinal layer. And at the end, you can see tonica adventitia. This is a dense, irregular connective tissue which can bind the esophagus to neighboring structures like trachea. These are the different layers which we have in the wall of esophagus. In this picture, you don't have any label. And now I want to label each part for you. The first layer which you can see with the green line is called tonica mucosa. In tonica mucosa, First, we have epithelium, then we have lamina propria, and after that, we have muscularis mucosa. After that, you can see tonica submucosa with the submucosal esophageal mucous gland. After that, we have tonica muscularis externa. The inner layer is circular and the outer layer is longitudinal. And at the end, you can see tonica adventitia, which can attach the esophagus to neighboring structures. I'm good. This is the actual histology of esophagus. In this histology picture, you can see the different layers of the wall. First, I want to show you the lumen. This is the lumen of our esophagus. And the layer which we have immediately after the lumen with the yellow line is tonica mucosa. Our tonica mucosa is composed of epithelium, which is a stratified squamous, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. Then you can see tonica submucosa with esophageal submucosal mucous gland. And after that, you can see tonica muscularis externa. Inner layer is circular, outer layer is longitudinal. And we have a small piece of tonica adventitia, which remain here. Here I zoomed the epithelium for you, so you can see a stratified squamous epithelium, more than one layer, and the surface layer cells are flat, and you can see a, a small part of lamina propria in this picture. In this picture, you can see the whole uh, tonica mucosa. Our tonica mucosa has three layers. First, we have a stratified squamous epithelium. Then we have lamina propria. And the last layer is called muscularis mucosa. The next structure is the stomach. We have four layers in the wall of the stomach like the other parts. First, you can see tonica mucosa with epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. The epithelium here is simple columnar epithelium, 
And this epithelium is specialized for making secretions, secretions of gastric juice, the acid and enzyme to digest proteins. You see that your epithelium invaginates to lamina propria and make gastric gland. And these gastric glands have opening to the surface. Their openings are called gastric pit. So the name of this opening are gastric pit. Then you can see the lamina propria and muscularis mucosa. After that, we have tonica submucosa. And then we have tonica muscularis externa. I told you that. In the stomach, the inner layer is oblique and it's not shown in the model. This is one of the problem of this model. The middle layer is circular and the outer layer is longitudinal. And after that, we have tonica serosa. This is a connective tissue which is lined with mesothelium. This mesothelium can secrete a small amount of serous fluid and serous fluid can lubricate the peritoneal cavity. So the organs in our peritoneal cavity can move without any friction. In this picture, you have the unlabeled stomach wall. And now I want to label it for you. The first layer which we have here is tonica mucosa. In tonica mucosa, first you have epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. You can see the gastric um, gland, and the opening of the gland is called gastric pit. After that, you have tonica submucosa. Then you can see tonica muscularis externa, which should have three layers, but in our models, it has only circular and longitudinal layer. And the last layer is called tonica serosa, the connective tissue with the mesothelium outside. Here is the histology of the stomach. In this histology, you can see different layers. The black arrow shows you tonica mucosa, epithelium lamina propria and muscularis mucosa. Then we have tonica submucosa, and after that we have muscularis externa. Here we zoomed uh, on the stomach inner two layers. You can see tonica mucosa here. Here we have simple columnar epithelium, which invaginates to the lamina propria. And as you see here, it can make long tubular gastric glands. The opening of the gland to the lumen of the stomach is called gastric pit. The lamina propria is full of glands. So you cannot see <clears throat> the connective tissue of lamina propria here. The only thing which you can see in this layer is the gland. And after that, we have muscularis mucosa. And then you can see tonica submucosa, which is the connective tissue. This is the other picture of the tonica mucosa of the stomach. You can see the epithelium. These are the gastric gland and the opening of the gland is called gastric pit. Here is your lamina propria full of glands. Here is the tonica mucosa. After that we have tonica sub mucosa and then we have muscularis externa. In this picture, you can see three layers of muscularis externa. You have inner oblique, middle circular, 
and outer longitudinal layer. And also we can see the tonica mucosa and tonica submucosa too. Between tonica mucosa and submucosa, you can see the muscularis mucosa. The next part is the small intestine. In the wall of a small intestine, again, we have uh, four layers. You can see these layers here. The first one is tonica mucosa, the epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. You have the gastric gland, sorry, the intestinal gland, which we call them intestinal crypt, and the finger-like projections, which we call them villi in this picture. Pay attention, your villi has the covering of epithelium with the core of lamina propria. The next layer is called the tonica submucosa. After that, we have muscularis externa with inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle. And the last layer is called tonica serosa. This is a connective tissue which is covered by mesothelia. And here is the unlabeled ileum, which is the part of our small intestine. The first layer is tonica mucosa with the villi, intestinal crypt, lamina propria and muscularis mucosa. You have the next layer, which is tonica submucosa. Then we have tonica muscularis externa with inner circular and outer longitudinal. And the last layer is called tonica serosa, connective tissue with the covering of mesothelia. And here you can see the actual histology image of a small intestine. The key which can help you identify this structure, the organ, is the presence of all of these finger-like projections which protrude to the lome. So when you see these structures, you can name them villi and you are in a small intestine. The first layer is tonica mucosa. You have epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa at the end. Then we have tonica submucosa. In the ileum, which is the last part of our small intestine, in tonica submucosa, we have aggregated lymphatic follicle or lymphatic nodule. And these aggregated lymphatic follicles are called peers patch. They can play an important role in our immunity. After that, you can see muscularis externa, and the last layer is called tonica serosa. This is the other picture of the small intestine. You can see the finger-like projections, they are villi, so you are in the a small intestine. You can see epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. These three layers are your tonica mucosa. Then you have tonica submucosa with peers patch. These structures are lymphatic follicle. Because they are aggregated, we call it peers patch. And then we have muscularis external. The zoomed tonica mucosa, you can see the epithelium, the simple columnar epithelium. From the small intestine toward the large intestine, between the epithelial cells, 
you can see some whitish round cells. These whitish or clear cells are called goblet cells. They can make mucus. This mucus can lubricate the surface. So the content of large and the small intestine can move smoothly in this tube. When we start from a small intestine and we reach the large intestine, the number of these cells increase. And we can see a large number of these cells in our large intestine. You can see the lamina propria. Between the villi, you can see depressions. They are intestinal crypt. And we have a very thin muscularis mucosa. And after that, we have tonica submucosa. And here you can see tonica submucosa, inner circular and outer longitudinal layer of the previous slide. And this is the complete slide. You can see the tonica mucosa, submucosa, inner circular and outer longitudinal of muscularis externa. You have villi, so you are in a small intestine. And all of these depressions are called uh, intestinal crypt. And you have many whitish clear cells here. They are goblet cells and they are responsible for mucous secretion. And the last part of our digestive tract is called large intestine. In the large intestine, again, we don't have any villi. And you can only see imagination of epithelium in the connective tissue which can make intestinal crypt. We have epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. Together, they make tonica mucosa. Then submucosa, we have muscularis externa. In this side, you can see both layers, inner circular and outer longitudinal. And the last layer is called tonica serosa. All of these openings are the openings of intestinal crypt. The epithelium of the large intestine is simple columnar epithelium, and we have many goblet cells between columnar cells. Here is the unlabeled large intestine, and if we want to label it, the first layer is tonica mucosa. The second one is tonica submucosa. Then we have tonica muscularis, and the last layer is called tonica serosa. This is the histology of large intestine. You don't have any villi and any projections. So this is large intestine, it's not as small. You have many glands or intestinal crypt and many, many whitish cells, which are goblet cells. You have tonica mucosa, submucosa, and muscularis, inner circular, outer longitudinal, and the last layer is called tonica serosa. The other picture of large intestine, you can see the tonica mucosa here. All of these depressions are the intestinal crypt, and you have many whitish goblet cells. You can see the tonica submucosa, inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle, and tonica serosa at the end. 
when the secretion of these goblet cells decrease, we have constipation. The goblet cells can make mucus and the mucus can lubricate the surface and help the stool move smoothly in our large intestine. This is the close-up view of uh, the large intestine. You can see these intestinal crypts and the abundance of the goblet cells in the epithelium. Tonica mucosa with intestinal crypt, submucosa, and the inner circular layer of tonica muscularis. And this is the inner circular, this is outer longitudinal, and the last layer is called tonica serosa. In the next session, I will talk about the accessory digestive structures and their histology uh, characteristics.